And I never like to make people who show up on time for a meeting wait if we don't have to. So let me know when you're ready. You're all set. Okay, we will call this meeting together of the ad hoc committee. Um, what is today? Today is the uh, April Nine. 9th. Yes. And this meeting is, purpose of this meeting is an input meeting to take input from anybody in the public who wants to tell us what qualities and what expertise and that we should, that the whole school committee should be looking for in the superintendent. What kind of person, what qualities do they have? What skills do they have? And so that at every meeting we're taking down the suggestions and then they'll be passed on to the full school committee so that they can utilize when they go through the remainder of the process. This is our third meeting. This is the third one and we'll have two more after this one. And do we have the sign up? Oh, no, we don't. Okay. I'll bet you whoever signed up first knows who, who they are. There's, I think there's folks ringing the door. The door's locked here, and folks are going to the, the entrance. I don't know if we can have that door locked. There's no students in the building, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I hear the doorbell ringing. Nobody, yeah, nobody's no. there. Yeah, I was locked out. There's no no signage telling people to go through Off, here. Officer, could you I see hear if you ringing. can locate a custodian and have them stand by that front door? Because if they're trying to ring, we don't want them to think they can't get in. Yeah, right. Okay, so the first person to sign up is Cedric Cunningham. Cedric. Cedric. Cedric, Cedric I'm sorry. I was curious, sir, if you could start us off by telling us as a school committee, what do you think is important um, in a superintendent for running Springfield Public Schools? I'm just curious what you think. Well, this is really for us to listen to you. The school committee, when it did went through the whole process, it set qualifications, then it went out in the advertisement uh, that a person should have. Um, and, and they were extensive. They, you had minimum qualifications. You had things in there like you should have had served in um, an urban district. Um, there are certain kinds of positions that you should have fallen through. So all of that, if you look at the what's online, you'll see that it was, because that was discussed for a long time, and it was spelled out, out all out, because you do want anybody who applies to know what it is that, you know, the school committee is looking for. Yeah, I understand that, but uh, just a point of a point of order, sir. Is, what is it uh, that you think is important? That's what I'm. I just think that's a valid, no question. Point of order, if I may, and thank you, sir, for your question. Where, where, where is is he supposed to stand, or any speaker supposed to stand? It's, so it's broadcasted because we're live. They can see him from. No, but can they hear? Can they pick up the audio? Are they picking up his voice. Just want to make sure you're being heard by, by those me? that are watching. I am picking him up. Yes, he's picking him up. He, okay. So folks can just stay at their seats to speak. Well, they, they can move to the center aisle if they feel more comfortable. If anybody sitting way over on the side, for example, might be out of that camera. Yeah, and, and this uh, mic. So if you just move more towards the center so that people can see you. Because I'm not sure. I know it's wide angle, but I'm not sure it's going to pick you all up. Uh, but that, this isn't for us to give you what I personally am looking for. This is for you to tell us. The school committee spent a long time creating that whole thing that was advertised, the whole pamphlet that said what the, what the person should have for skills and training and experiences. We put that all out there. Again, I understand that. I just wanted to hear what was your opinion. But Again, you don't want to right, we're not, we're not supposed to be offering our opinions here. We're supposed to be taking in information. A point of information, Mr. Chair. I think the doorbell's still ringing. I had I had the police officer go okay. and find a custodian to stay down there. Okay. Um, so that if anybody's ringing, that they can get in. Okay. There's one on that side. Too. There's one on that side too. Yeah. But I asked the police officer to go find someone and put him by the. We're going by the list, and but the list is still over there, so people can sign. People are coming in now can sign in. Uh, I'm sorry, I, Cedric, are you through? Or 
before I call the next person? Pardon me? Did you agree? With well, we did. We, we as a whole body, made, came up with the qualifi qualifications of what we're looking for in a superintendent. But I can answer your question. I'm looking for someone with leadership, someone that has a work in an urban district as we are here, and someone that's personable, that people can go to him or her and um, voice their opinion or questions or concern within the district, not have to go through hoops to get to, to them. That's just my opinion. Okay. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And thank you for your question. Do you feel the same, Josiah? Well, you know, for me, I think one of the things that's important as we have the community here and those viewing online is we need a leader that is listening to the community. Because as of late, even with the process, there has been deaf ears as it relates to some of the items that the community has requested, be it student representation, be it the viewing of all applications. So you need transparency and you need someone who is committed to listening to the community. So I think those are some of the characteristics that I'm looking for. Yep. By the way, um, the doorbell it's got nothing to do with the door it's okay. some it's some other bell that's calling people in the building they just went and checked out and they have got somebody down there so rhonda jacobs i'm just here for to be in attendance that's why okay I'm all right uh emilio holloway so no microphone this time <laughs> no this is a friendlier group oh well, the, the last time that, that theater was so big, you they just are. weren't sure whether people would be heard or not. But they they're able to pick they're able to pick them up. They be able yeah, to they they can hear it. He's okay. he's checking back there, and he knows your voice is being picked up. Okay. Uh, all right. So I did speak at the last uh, session, and I had not planned. I had just planned to come and listen. And after being there, I did think about um, what I would like to add as something I'd like to see in the new superintendent. Um, and I think it's more of a characteristic, and I don't know how you measure that. I know that I would love to see a leader, a superintendent with courage. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say courage is because even for me to decide to say what I'm gonna say this evening, I had to come up with some courage because it was very emotional for me. Mm. I am looking for a superintendent who will have the courage to review and revisit the idea of public safety in schools. And I say that because I have worked in the system for years and I know that the knee-jerk response for safety is hire more police. I need to share with you that at the last uh, session, when I entered Central, there, was, there were no balloons encouraging me to come to give my input. There was no sign saying, this is where we are having the session so that the community can come in and share what they'd like to see. Mm -hmm. Upon my entrance, there was a police person and I need to say that for me, a police doesn't represent safety. For me, when I see an armed policeman, I, I become traumatized. I mm. feel fear because of the history of what policing, when it started, and the people that they were uh, in, concerned about controlling and containing. Mm -hmm. So I know what has been done and what continues to be done. Mm -hmm. But if we would look at the results, we would see you're not getting any better response right. from the individuals that you're working with by providing armed police. So please know there is trauma associated with police, but armed police, when I see them, because they shoot us when we are running away. And they beat us up and they, they intimidate. I'm intimidated by them. So I need 
a superintendent who has an awareness of what certain kind of safety uh, examples look like to people. I would like a superintendent who would want to revisit. What do we need to do in our schools? What do we need to demonstrate? What do we need to put in place? What personnel should we put in place so that people feel safe? Do we want to intimidate people? Do we want people coming into a building and feel intimidated? Or do we want people to come into a building and feel supported? Yes. That's the kind of thing that I would love to see. Uh, I can assure you that whether it's verbalized or not, that certain individuals and certain things and certain actions continue to traumatize us. And I think an individual coming in as a superintendent, the person, will have to be sensitive to that and have the courage to broach the subject, to engage people who may be in a position or engage people who can understand what do we want to do when a young person comes into the building? How do we make them feel safe? What do we need to do? And once they're in the building, what are the services and the supports that we need to have there, there so that we teach them what it is that we would like to have them do? So courage to review and revisit what makes sense in a public school around public safety, having people come and feel safe and not feel intimidated and not feeling that they have to be, not being looked at like a thug. You know, I want students to be looked at as human beings who are coming to learn and who are interested in becoming productive citizens. And I want a surrounding that is conducive to producing that kind of kind of atmosphere. So courage, review and revisit and look at what means public safety to young people because if we keep doing what we've been doing, we'll keep getting what we've been getting and it doesn't get any different or any better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're not the first one to bring up the word courage, but you certainly were eloquent in your explaining of what it meant, what you meant by courage. So thank you for that. Um, Norman Roldan is the next one on the list. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here because we're a voice of the system here, and our kids at the system really cares of what we do here. So it's important to be a voice. I'm glad that we're here today talking about what we're looking for superintendent. First of all, I want transparency. I want, if there's a list of people that are applying for superintendent, it goes straight to, to the committee. So the committee can make a judge uh, decision to make sure we get the right people on board. Because we just mentioned this, our, the population is not the same it was years ago. And we have a lot of minorities in the system that represents us, that's a voice for us. And we need to make sure they understand who we are as a culture and who we are as people. Um, we're all that diverse in the system and really a big number of students that goes in the, that are in the system. So that's one, right? Second of all, I want to make sure the superintendent understands that every school is important, not just only a couple of schools, right? We've seen that too. We've seen certain schools get more attention than other schools. I think all the schools are, are important. Every single one should have the same format as every single school, not one different from the other. Um, and continue improving the school systems that we have. We, we've done some good work here at the school systems that are new, but we need to continue. We can't stop. we got to keep make sure that who comes in and stands that what the budget means for us and what it means for education. And the last one is the education piece of it. It needs to be looked at to make sure it fits the form of what we have for our kids. I know we have DESI that makes recommendations. We understand that. We understand that, that that's something we have to follow. But I see other school systems that step beyond that. They go beyond that line. They say, you know what, Desi wants this, but we see a need in this school system for this. I want that to be addressed as we go forward. I want to make sure that those schools get addressed with those formats that they need to make sure that the kids are addressed with those needs. And, and that is it for me, guys. So thank you for being here, guys. Thank you, Norman. Uh, Rhonda Latney. 
So I have something written out here. Um, I'm going to start off with one of the main things I had concern with was the next superintendent be aware of what it means to be stakeholders, those that have students, families, communities, and the business stakeholders. In 2015, there was a concern of expanding charter schools would create a two-tier system for education and take public funds and siphon them into private interests. Here in 2024, the prophetic truth 2015 concerning the empowerment zone charter schools, a business stakeholder, which is a two-tier system and private sector overlooking approximately eight middle schools and to include the other charter schools. I lived in the city of Springfield for over six decades, employed as a special education teacher in the Springfield Public Schools for 25 years, and a 1978 graduate from the Roger Putnam Trade School, which at various times saw graduating classes of approximately six to 1,000 students each year. And the only requirement for acceptance was selecting Putnam as the school of choice. Now with the reconstruction of Putnam Academy, Entry requirements are based on a lottery, students' entry test score, an acceptance letter, and a graduate student population of approximately 50 to 100 students per school year. To include the rebuilding of Putnam's Plum Field, going to the Duggan Middle School, owned by the Department Zone, these are major concerns when you consider the school committee member, Christopher Collins State, Springfield's a large, complex urban district with a high poverty rate and a lot of high needed students. The past history of Putnam School <laughs> provided a dire need for alternatives to urban students who are ready for population, to urban students who are ready with learned trades and skills, and the opportunities or future opportunities and an answer to absorbent college costs. Developing some of vocational training and apprentice program for young adults for ages 18 to 25 led to much need of renovation, can lead to much need of renovations of homes and circulating revenue in the urban community, which can help to develop and building self pride and as a means to de escalate crime and poverty. The apartment zone has approximately eight middle schools, and the number of other charter schools led to the decrease of superintendent's words, responsibilities, and his administration due to the two-tier system and during the period of declining MCAS scores had a negative impact on students and teachers. However, superintendent work salary was privileged with astronomical pay increase. <laughs> Stockholders of the apartment zone and other charter schools have received unreported millions of dollars over the years from the sale of their personal brand uniforms sold to students and family classified as high poverty rated and high need students. The Springfield Public School mandate uniform policy in 1999 was based on racial profiling, violation of constitutional rights of students, and was implemented with the concerns of business stakeholders monopolizing the uniform mandate for financial gains and concerns of economic impacts. Second, safety and security regarding the shooting incident at Side Tech. I was alarmed to hear on the news that a teacher <laughs> opened the side door and the statement from Ryan Walsh with the Springfield Police Department's comments of the length of time that police conduct their investigation. The inconceivable decision for students to return to school the next day without thorough public police investigation and prior securing an affidavit from students, teachers, and other, other witnesses raised a major concern in a breach of safety and security for students and staff. Since the Columbine High School massacre in 1999, <clears throat> schools across the United States had impl implemented procedures, protocols, and drills regarding an active shooting. The protocols and procedures which was developed within the Springfield Public Schools need to be shared, scrutinized, and addressed publicly, publicly for decision with students, safety, families, and communities. Second, this most final thing on safety and security that I'm concerned with is the highly 
sensitive, sensitive matter and bringing the much attention of what is called room within the Springfield Public School, a matter that needs to be investigated, investigated and addressed. I would be requesting it an investigation of the city audit of Mayor Simon's administration, calling for the reinstatement of the control board and filing a complaint to the Department of Elementary and Secondary educa Education concerning these matters. I employ the students and families and communities to continue the pursuit for greater accountability and transparency mm. in the present and incoming superintendent and school committee. Right. Thank you, um, just to remind everybody that please give us try to give us some input on what you think we should be looking for. That's really why we're here. And just a, a point of information. A point of information. Um, Plumfield is not owned. It is owned by the park department. And that was the school department, school committee and department made sure of that. And it will be available for the general public to use when it's not being used during oh, the school day. Yeah. Took put, moved it back all the way to uh, I'm, where it's at. I'm just correcting it. Rhonda, I'm just you saying. We have two football fields before I, high school. I'm not going to debate with you, but Rhonda. I'm just telling you that, that you shouldn't Plum, get Plum Field Plum is. Plum Field should have remained at Putt. It was always. Thank the you. Putt on thank the football you, Rhonda. Team, a high thank you. In the public school. And you're welcome. Thank you. Um, Naomi Edwards. Thank you. All right. At a public, at a recent public school committee meeting regarding the process of the superintendent search, um, our school committee members acknowledged the community's outcry for transparency, and on a surface level. Um, it appears that we got what we asked for. However, after looking into the process a little bit more closely, I've come to realize that there is still a huge lack of transparency. For example, the screening committee and how we've selected the members of it. I'd first like to say that I applaud the work of the committee and I have personally no issue with its members. My point to make here is that a lot of members of this committee have experience that gives them bias and connection to the SBS school department. And from this, I will take away that our future superintendent should definitely be transparent with students more than the district is right now. This. For example, Gloria Williams is listed as a parent. However, she is not a parent of a child attending a Springfield Public Schools, nor did her children attend a Springfield Public School. They attended a private school oh, and her grandchildren also attended a private school. Mind your kids are grown. So you can't make that argument that she's a parent mm -hmm. of a student attending an SBS school. Um, this is bothersome because she's also directly affiliated with state representative Bud Williams. Mm -hmm. This position that was intended to be given to a parent of a Springfield Public School student was wrongfully awarded to someone directly affiliated to a state representative and someone that has no children that have ever attended a Springfield Public School. Do we see the issue here? So to revisit last week's meeting, Chris Collins, you were strongly against the idea of allowing a student to be a part of the screening committee because of the deadline. After my research, I'm confused on why this was, was such a large issue for you, Chris, because you clearly bent backwards to allow Ms. Williams to fill a spot that was supposed to be given to an actual parent of a student attending a Springfield Public School. Thank you. <laughs> Devon Pagan, is it Pagan? So going off of what Ms. Edwards just said, um, I think the quality that we should focus on is transparency. This whole screening committee process, um, the majority, if not all the members have either been SPS employed or are SPS employed. Mm -hmm. when, when you have SPS members who are written down as community, marked as community, but aren't given an actual spot to somebody who is from the community and yet is employed by SPS, 
It shows a strong conflict of interest. Yeah. It shows a strong conflict of interest. You all voted on these people, and yet you chose to mark them as SPS parent when for somebody like Danielle Delgado, who's the principal of Brightwood, but yet marked as SPS parent, mm -hmm. she may be an SPS parent, but she also is, a, is an SPS administrator. You can't just leave something out like that when we have the most important decision being made by this committee for our lives right here. Yeah. For our lives right here. I think it's, it's, I think we really need to backtrack on those people, how, how you guys chose those people, votes that you did, and just everything because it's a strong conflict of interest. It's a strong conflict of interest. Destiny. So going based off of what Davian and Naomi were just talking about, I would also like to add on that someone that we really strive for and need in this community as a superintendent is someone who reflects representation. Mm -hmm. As the community and yes. SUS schools are primarily made up of minority students, as you can primarily see behind me, uh, we need someone who truly understands the struggles and what we need in a superintendent and what we need in SPS schools. Someone who doesn't understand us who is so far and has such a large gap from us to them, such as uh, Daniel Warwick, does not reflect the representation that we need and want as a superintendent. We need someone that's truly going to listen to us when we say we need and want something. And we need someone who is going to understand the struggles that we see on a day-to-day -day basis when we walk into those buildings. As they were also saying, based off of the search committee, committee uh, mostly uh, as what Naomi was saying, personally, if I was currently on that search committee, I wouldn't even want to continue about a student on it. I think student voice is so significant, especially with something that could uh, impact all of our lives in this in this SBS school system. And as we are all here, we aren't just here for ourselves, we're here for our peers. We need someone who is going to listen and we need we need that uh, we need to be able to actually share our voice. And like I said before, being on that search committee is a huge part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Madison Smith. In the SPS system, students are in a continuous battle about their future. And I'm up here today to advocate for our future generations and current students in the Franklin Public Schools. A specific question that I have to ask is why are you selecting SPS employees as members of a community group? Other than that, this new superintendent needs to do what their job is entitled to do. Do what the kids need, and not what just benefits you. Focus on their education as well as their mental health and someone who is transparent and possesses qualities that you guys do not. Sianna, Sylvia? Did I mispronounce your first name? Sianna? Sineha, I'm sorry. Sineha. 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 I'll get it right eventually. Thank you, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just up here today to tell you what we need in our superintendent. And I, I feel like we need a superintendent who looks like my peers now. As diversity and representation, it, it really shows. If you're someone who's in this position where you can make decisions about us and what we're going through, you have to understand what we're going through. Like she said, you walk into the building and you don't feel what we feel because you have not been through it, okay? So I'm here to ask you a question. How can we trust that our concerns are being considered and not just considered, but something is being done about it when the person representing us can't comprehend the struggles that we've gone through? Okay, like we said, we're a, a group of minorities and the superintendent right now is not a representation of that. Having someone who's diverse and understands us, it shows that you as SPS actually care and it just fosters a sense of empowerment and togetherness within the community, which clearly we see has not happened. He's been in power for too long 
so over so many decades and no changes have actually been made. You can't see change when you don't make the change. It's how an experiment works. You can't mess up something and then expect it to look better. So I come to you to ask again to please reopen the registration for students to join the selection committee because the first time it was not done sufficiently. Patience Marie. I feel it's important to ensure that every student's voice is heard and valued in this process. By involving students or student, a student or students, we can create a, a more inclusive and student-centered edu education system. By listening to a student input and perspectives, a superintendent can ensure that decisions are made with the best interest of students in mind and not just the adults. Because at the end of the day, we the students make up a, a majority of the school, not just the adults. Thank you. Thank you. Patty, do you have another shining sheet? You must have, because I know the. Oh, okay. Oh, there's one more in here. I'm sorry, Aaron Rodriguez. So, do I get the next sheet? So, um, one of the main things I think um, would be, be a beneficial trait to have in our new superintendent is openness. And um, while yes, there has been a lot of talk about. Um, Honesty and uh, sort of like showing do um, that is a part of it, but that's not necessarily what I mean. Um, uh, I think that a lot of concerns are constantly being brought up about how the system is working, and although uh, many of them are taken into consideration, and I'm aware that there are things that um, the school committee and uh, your allies do to sort of remedy the things that are being brought to attention. Uh, there are some things that are sort of shut down on the spot because they aren't really seen as a problem by the people that are uh, sort of behind what's really going on. Uh, and I think that an openness to hearing new ideas about how these things can be fixed uh, will be beneficial. And again, part of it is uh, sort of the honesty that comes um, from being someone that's sort of at the top of the system, being able to admit that there are things that are going on wrong, and um, also being able to see that uh, just because these things have been done uh, during um, in a certain way for such a long time, that it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to keep working. For example, uh, the sort of I hesitate to say it, but rigging of uh, how the school committee was chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, as my peers have brought up, there were many uh, uh, people on the school committee that were put in a certain category, not, not taking into account uh, certain conflict of interest or just straight up lies um, you say that may have been behind it. And I think that if you are to actually listen to us, um, it would be beneficial to sort of rework that mm -hmm. and uh, just be more open about how the process is going as opposed mm -hmm. to trying to kick things under the rug mm -hmm. that may not seem important to you, but definitely are important to us. Mm -hmm. okay. Excuse me. Uh, is it Lydia Goonin? It appears to be good in the last name. Is it Zeta Govan? Oh my God, Zeta! It is. I'm just, I'm, I didn't recognize your name. It looked like an L to me. You know, you're the last one in the world that knows how to do a cursive Z. Yeah, <laughs> still learned it in school. <laughs> the high school of commerce. Me too. Right the street. Yeah. Like the, so. I'm Zedico and I am a warden city council here in the city of Springfield. And I just want to commend all of you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I want to commend the school committee because this is the first time in history that we've done a search like this, right? Historically, 
they decided who the superintendent was and without any input. So this is great that you're doing this. Um, but listen to the, to the young people, right? Um, they are absolutely right that we need transparency. I would challenge you to start the whole process over. Um, <laughs> student um, population heard, right? Um, I first want to say, I, I correct um, anybody that starts off by saying that we're not the minority, right? We're the majority in the city. So when we talk about we're the minority, we're not. We're people of color who are the majority. That's the right. That's right. So we need to so, I'm here because I want to see the next superintendent in our city do exactly what the students said, right? So I'm, I'm not even going to repeat that. Everything that they said is true. One thing I do want to ask the superintendent, the next superintendent to have is what Ms. Murrell said is to have courage to challenge the MCAS, right? Um, I think that the MCAS cost us too much money. And Chris, I guess you said this at a previous meeting. We have the highest poverty rate in this in probably this country, right? In the state for sure. Definitely the state. Um, and we're spending so much money on that MCAS, right? You have to buy it. It costs money to buy it. It costs money to administer. And then it costs money to get scored. All that money we could be putting into our schools, right? Um, the teachers, you know, I commend the teachers here because that's a job that I could not do. Um, <laughs> I think those are things. Thank you. Know? Thank you. Teachers are saints. I truly believe that. Yeah. And um, parents. And parents. Every staff in the school. Yeah. Okay. 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 Everybody um, are saints to work in that system. I could not do it myself. I just couldn't do it. But I think, you know, um, making sure that our, our staff, right, is respected, paid. I remember when I was at this high school, Commerce, I went through all the school system. I went to Brightwood, Chestnut, and then Commerce. And I remember being in home ec, right? Learning how to cook. I remember being in woodwork, learning how to you know, hammer things together. Um, at the High School of Commerce, I was in a photography club. I was in a newspaper club, right? And those kind of things are the things that I think that we need in, besides the MCAS, this yeah. is for the next superintendent. <laughs> well, um, <after> that. <laughs> you know, because the MCAS teaches kids how to take a test. Right. And what about the kids that have test anxiety? Like right. my daughter did. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the kids who don't test well? Period. Right. Um, when I was in school, we'd get tested for algebra. If we did al good in algebra, we passed algebra. If we passed the English test, we did good in English, we passed. We graduated. Um, so that, that's what I want to say. And then I did get a statement from um, City Council uh, Victor Davila, who asked me to send a message, and I'll just read what he said real quick, and that's where I'm going to stop. Um, dear school committee members, I asked the school committee to vote to allow the screening committee to review and consider all 11 completed superintendent applications. This will ensure full transparency in the process and will help to ensure that the final candidate chosen for the position of superintendent comes into the job with full transparency and the necessary support he or she will need to lead our school system. With the slightly larger pool of candidates, representatives from the community on the screening committee, including parents, teachers, administrators, community members, and business leaders, which now I think we need to relook at, right? Because it doesn't sound like they're really those positions. Um, they will be better able to fulfill your mandate to recommend three to five of the most highly qualified candidates for superintendent. Thank you for your time, Council Victor Vagaba, and thank you all for your thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you and don't forget that that question is on the ballot in fall. Which question? There, there's MCAS. a question on, oh, the, on the ballot, yeah. so that the MCAS does not. Stops being a graduation request. Yes. So, yes. We just, I want to take usually that. I wouldn't edit, but you brought it up. So I just want to make sure that people remember that that's out there. It'll be on the ballot this fall. Yes. Uh, Teresa Bryant. Superintendent that diversity, inclusion, the superintendent to be a good listener, 
operate in transparency. Whereas if he was leaving this position and he saw all the smoke mirrors and screens that are going up right now, then he would say, stop. I want a superintendent that values community, that values our parents, that before the screening process, there's a whole bunch of conflict on because they didn't even take the time to get an authentic parent that is not associated with the district that struggles to get their kid to school yes. every day, just a regular community person. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you could have inspired in that person. Mm -hmm. And so because you undervalue and marginalize our parents, you undervalue and marginalize our students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That doesn't see our students as suspects, where they're mm -hmm. always under surveillance, but sees them as solid. Yeah. Oh, so, I want a superintendent that values community mm -hmm. and that really takes the time to listen. Mm -hmm. And I think that this whole process, this the fact that there's no transparency, and you can tell me that you got a lawyer. I know the lawyer. She did an investigation for me. Mm -hmm. And she only investigated one person. She only talked to one of my witnesses. Mm -hmm. So there was no investigation. So to say that you have a law firm and that people don't want a lawsuit, the lawyer gets to look at all the all of the applicants, but no one else does. Right. The committee doesn't get to right. see why it's right. screened out. That's, right. That's a lawsuit. That's right. <laughs> it's unacceptable. That's right. It's unacceptable. So right now in the community, I live in the community. I've been, I grew up in the community. I'm a product of Springfield Public Schools. I walk down the street, but people tell me already who the superintendent's going to be. Mm. Come on. Because of that is going on in the city. You want to be authentic yeah. and transparent. Yeah. I think that we need to start this whole process over yeah. because if you value the lives of our children, then you would value who you choose as the next superintendent. Mm -hmm. That's right. It only says Dr. Fala, so I'm assuming it's Dr. Paul. Oh. I had something else to say uh, before listening to these young people again. And it, it, it hits a chord on so many levels with these young people pleading with you to get on the committee, the screening committee. Then I think about the decades that have been in the school system uh, watching how stakeholders are able to dictate what the students learn, how the students learn it, even the technology. And then when I test students at 12th grade, they're reading at a kindergarten grade reading level. And I don't just mean once. I mean year after year after year. A superintendent who values the community, a superintendent who values the students, a superintendent that values the teachers and the parents is a superintendent that can lead this district into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that all of those things get encapsulated in the next line. Thank you. Thomas Hardcastle. I just had one quick question. Um, so the number of candidates has been narrowed down to five. At what point will you be releasing the names of those from bars so that the public can know something about them? and give their input on what they think about those candidates and what they're yeah. Like, I, I'm just curious as to when you were planning on doing that, like, was it after this been narrowed down to the possible zoo or? No, it, it, the schedule is out there um, that spells it all out. The, the, the five have yet to even go to the screening committee. The screening committee interviews them and then they send their recommendation to the school committee of all five, three to five, whatever their recommendation is, at that point, when they have narrowed it to whatever the finalists are, their names are made public. When you have a superintendent in search all over the country, there's an expectation of privacy until that point, until you're a finalist, and then all holds are off. Your, your name goes public. Right. So the last thing that happens to the all the candidates that that will be I think the screening committee let me see let me try to see what the date the screening committee is bringing them to um, 
think it's yeah. next week. Yeah. Is it the next 8th? Seven. I believe it's the 8th. Okay. Next seven. Pardon me? May 7th, somebody said, when they're supposed to finish up their piece? Uh, I believe that's an input meeting. Let me get the date. I think it's the 10th, but let me get Oh, okay, wait a second. We've got it right in here. Here I am searching my phone. Um, let's go. <clears throat> May 8th, the screening committee will present to the school committee the whatever number of finalists they bring forward. So it's May 8th. That becomes public then. Right. And that leaves time for background checks and investigations and visits and all of the other things that have to take place. So it's May 8th. May 8th is when they will be... Well, May 8th, they are brought to... <laughs> they're, they're brought to this committee. Yeah. And then we have to bring them. If we can, we'll hear that in executive session. We will give it to the full committee in public session so that the names are public. Um, I, don't, do we, I don't know that we've set that. It'll either be the 8th, the 9th, or is there a school committee meeting, right? By then? Let me see. May 9th is the date. May 9th is the date that we have on the calendar. So they give them to us on the 8th. We do it in public to the school committee on the 9th. That gives this committee a chance to contact those individuals and say, your name is going public. Are you still in? And do you want to go forward? They get the one last chance, which is a typical process of this kind of a search. And, and point of information, Mr. Chair, just a point of uh, information for the public's knowledge, those both here and those watching uh, online, the charge to the screening committee was three to five. Um, so to answer your question, sir, it, they're supposed to submit three to five finalists to the full body. As it stands today, there were only five that have gone through to the screening committee and in question are six, that were somehow removed unilaterally by attorney that speaks to the lack of transparency with this process. And to be frank to everyone present, there are many of us who are pushing forward the transparency, the incorporation of student voice, and we're being met with opposition, both by the mayor of this city and the superintendent of our school department. For, for, furthermore, Furthermore, I have asked the chairman of the ad hoc committee. I've asked Mr. Collins, and this is, we're a public body, so the public should know our proceedings and what's trying to be done. I have asked the chairman, let's put these two items on the agenda and let's deal with them. I've been told not interested. I've been told that we need a legal opinion to proceed. Any which one of us can go huddle in a corner with our buddies that are attorneys and get legal opinions that defend what we want to do. But we want to do what the community wants to do. So no today, no Thursday, no proceeding who stands with the community, with all of you, and those in the minority that don't care what anybody in this room has to say. Thank you. Just, just a couple of corrections, Mr. Gonzalez. Please. Number one, the public asked for a private entity to do the screening, not, excuse me. No, we didn't get it. Now, you didn't disrupt Mr. Gonzalez. Yep, true. When we, had, when we were going through the process and setting the process, the public made it clear they didn't want the internal, they didn't want the HR department and the, and the attorney for the school department doing the pre-screening. 
they wanted an outside private entity. The outside private entity is the attorneys of Bulkley Richards that are doing the free screening. They look at they look at the they look at the qualifications that were in the post in the, in the advertisement. They look at their resumes, see whether they've met the minimum qualifications. And I, if, I suppose if there's question, they would call them, they would contact them to get clarifications. The, anyone that meets the minimum qualifications, everyone that meets the minimum qualifications is then passed on to the screening committee. By the way, the last time that we did this, there were a number of, and there were only six candidates, again, that were passed on to the screening committee the last time that ended up meeting the minimum qualifications. You did ask me to put this on our agenda. You are not told, no thanks, I'm not paying attention to you. We had a discussion. You know that I called we have two experts. We have the outside agency, and we have the agency the, from the Mass Association of School Committees that helped design this process and worked with the school committee to, to design the entire process. I told you that I was calling them and asked them, should we put this on an agenda? And his response was, no, you need to have it reviewed to see there are serious legal implications to the entire process. Have the attorney review it before you put it on any agenda. That's what happened. And, and here, here's, here's the reality again. I can go get an attorney, get a consultant, huddle in a corner, get an opinion that further cements exactly what I want to do or what's in the favor of a select few of the body. That's all that's going on here, folks. And it's time that what is happening in private, the systemic oppression of the voice of the people, it's time that people know who's doing what and who's doing what behind, behind the scenes, because folks don't want to talk about this. We could have deliberated on these matters in public with or without a legal opinion, as we do on a number of items. It just so happens to be that this does not benefit certain individuals in the school committee and an administration. As the community said, they probably know already who they want for this job. And what they are discounting is that their opposition does not make up the majority of the school committee at this time. Just for a point of clarity, to make a statement, that make up a statement that anybody can huddle with anybody is completely misleading this group, misleading this group of people. Excuse me. Excuse me. Nobody, none of us or anybody from the department is allowed to contact that, that agency that's doing the review. There's nobody huddling with anybody because no one's allowed to contact them. They have to be separate. Okay, we will move on to, we already had Thomas, Leonora Anderson. I'm just going to be able to Okay, thank you, Leonora. Uh, Yaviska. Yaviska. Alice. Yaviska. 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 So for me, I need a superintendent about and recognizes good teachers. We lose teachers every single year. Who are good teachers because they feel like they're being run down till their last breath. So we need someone who recognizes good teaching, who supports good teachers, and who is active in making us feel good about the work that we're putting into our classrooms, mm -hmm. that we're putting into our students. The other thing, someone who cares about diversity, not just ethnically, but based on gender and sexuality too. I have too many students who are afraid to talk about their sexuality, to talk about their gender identity, because they're not sure that all the teachers around them or the superintendent or the admin are gonna be supportive of their lives and of their safety in that school. So I want someone who cares about all types of diversity, looks like us, understands us, and also is going to us to be more open to other people who are like us. Amen. 
people who don't necessarily fit what we view as important. Thank you. Francine Pina Council. Oh, I thought I was I was actually just signing in to Well that's all you don't have to no, but I do have well, I do have um, Okay, we're glad to hear from you. That happened to a Muriel Holloway, by the way, <laughs> at the first meeting. She thought she was just coming to listen and ended up talking. So you know, in just hearing um the process thus far and how um um candidates um were um dismissed by a, an attorney. That's right. Um, I don't understand that process. Why wasn't there a team, you know, of of you know um, that would, would it would go through, rather than um, someone that is outside of of the process? I don't understand that. It's the law firm. It's not necessarily an individual. They're reviewing the applications, but seeing whether they've met the minimum criteria. But even though, why wouldn't you have? a select group of educators um, that would you the that part of the process as we develop the process and as you're doing all of those and glenn kutcher if he was here with that has to be totally private that cannot be done in public that because all people who applic who apply to a job of superintendency have an expectation of privacy a lot of people apply are currently in other jobs. They have an expectation of privacy and they are granted that expectation of privacy till the point where they become a finalist and then their names are made public. So if the application was was passed on, does it mean that they didn't meet the basic requirements of filling out that application? Right? The, the application, I'm not sure what you mean by passed on, but the applications well, they, originally... They were... You know, they were, they, they were they okay. They, they, didn't, they didn't choose that. Did they not meet the minimum yes. requirements? Yes. That's what that means. That's what they, we need to know. Yeah. Well, you do know what they are. They're in, they are in the, in everything that was published when it was, the when they applied, the minimum quali qualifications are there. So everybody knows them. They are there, but that's exactly. So the seven yes. or five or whatever it is, they're the only ones that met the minimum. Those are the five that met the minimum criteria. I like I said, the last time we had six that met the minimum criteria out of all the people who applied. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Francine. Uh, Alan Morales Perez. My name is Alan. I'm a student at Fulham and just here to give you my view on this and also ask a question. But first off, I want to say that I am an SPS student. I go to Fulham. And not only that, I am an older brother to two siblings. And I guess what I want to say is with this search, what I want is someone who really shows that they care about us because there's been many examples where it kind of seems like they kind of brush us off. Mm -hmm. They don't really show any kind of um, care. One of the biggest examples was the SciTech incident that we all saw. And I guess one of the things that really troubles me is the lack of transparency and just mm -hmm. the honesty that isn't there from you guys. Because, well, if we look at the members of the search committee, there are various people who take up the community spot of parents, quote unquote parents. But if we look into them, we see that they're not only not parents of SBS students, but they're also involved in working with the district or within the school. And if we're searching for someone that will take the spot, I want the decision to be unbiased. I don't want it to be where it feels kind of like rigged. I don't want it to be where where some decisions will be made where they only care about how it will benefit them, how it will give them more power instead of how it will benefit us and our future generations. And as I said, I'm an older brother. And the last thing I want to see is the situation that's like that happening to my little brothers because Okay. Fine. Take your time. 
You're a perfect example of what two people said earlier is it takes courage to stand there. You've got it. You're doing a great job. Just continue. Especially in this area, I've known that it's being quoted as a very dangerous area. And I don't want that for my brothers. Uh, with this future generation, I see that there's a lot of kids struggling. And with this new incentive, I just want someone to show that they care. That's it. Thank you. Is it Margarito or Margarito? I'm probably saying the first name wrong. Margarine. Margarine. It didn't look like Margarito. I'm sorry. This, your handwriting is pretty good, but I'm probably not reading so. Well, I tell you what, it's better than mine. I can tell you. That means you got better printing than I do. That's for sure. Okay. Good evening. Thank you for. Um, thank you for at least listening to us. What you do with this? is my concern. But um, I have a few things and some of them have already been iterated, so I'm trying to cross out and add on and cross out. Um, <clears throat> superintendent, who, what I'm looking for is a superintendent who is physically involved within each and every school within Spring. The other thing is also have conversations with the community. And the community is the staff. The community is the educators. The community is the custodial staff. The community is the kitchen staff. I don't know what this particular name for that. Um, the community is also the clerks that are in the building. Um, previously, superintendents have visited the schools without a tailgate of people behind them. Mm -hmm. And it makes me wonder, that they, are they afraid? What do you think the staff feels and the students feel? Mm -hmm. So I feel that um, it's important that me have grown up in the school system as well as working for the school system that um, I recall a previous superintendent came by themselves and came to the school unannounced. And it was okay because they came to talk to us. They spent time. They sat down with the students and conversation with the staff. Now let's see that come back mm -hmm. so that they can see exactly what's going on That's in the school system that, that they're governing over. I'm disappointed that the superintendent is paid more than the mayor. Mm. And, it was, and the superintendent, um, it doesn't even govern all the schools. We have an apartment school that's not governed by the superintendent. My concern is there. Um, I don't know why I'm nervous because I'm in front of students all the time. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's a big difference. I'm not afraid of them. Um, um, I would like for the superintendent to be engaged with the staff and the schools and recognize the concerns of the health of not just the students, but also the staff. Mm -hmm. That's a major concern. Someone brought that up, mm -hmm. that there is health, um, there's mental illness within our staff, and there's, we need to have support. We deal with very many situations, mm -hmm. and I'm not even going to count them out. Right. A fire drove to me right now, is, I have concern about how close these students are to the houses and, and such a small street and getting out of here if there was an emergency or if there was a fire. Um, to know that families, families are important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Families could be just one person. Families could be the student trying to get home to find and have a meal. Families, we cannot have a school system mm. without our families. That's right. They are, the they are very important. Mm -hmm. And they need, to be, they need to be heard. Not just for this situation, but for all situations. That's right. When a PTO or PTA or whatever comes forth should have somebody there. School committee members should also be there. Council people should also be at the meeting because we're talking about something that's happening in our schools, whether it's negative or positive. And there's extremely so many positive things that are happening in the school system that's not being recognized. Someone mentioned scholars. Not only are the student scholars, but the staff is also scholars. That's right. My final concern is, and my final comment I want to say is that many people have voiced their concerns 
and asked for some transparency or giving you ideas. And I'm just gonna wonder, hopefully their words do not come in vain. Andrea Williams. Good evening, everybody, mm -hmm. city council, school committee members. Um, my name is Andrea Williams. I am here tonight more so as a parent, but I am also an educator. I was an educator in the city of Springfield for over 15 years. I returned back maybe two years ago. I have worked in Chicopee. I've worked in Holyoke. I've worked in Hartford. I've worked in Washington, D.C. Um, I've seen a lot of things happen and change. I have an older daughter, so Miss Foster Franklin was my daughter's kindergarten teacher. She's a central graduate, 2006. Miss mm. Kenya Council was her administrator at Chestnut. Uh, one thing I would like to say is that the next superintendent, although I would like to see representation, every person who is a person of color does not necessarily, necessarily represent me. Oh, my God. Who genuinely cares about our community? Whether they are still affiliated with Springfield Public Schools, they are still here and have a vested interest. A lot of our community members or educators may not even live in Springfield. I'm not here to talk about residency or anything, but my question is Is this quality of education good enough? for your children. So the next superintendent for me should be someone who cares, who looks at the data. My second child is a fourth grader at Glickman Elementary, so Glickman Gladiators. <laughs> this is a school of distinction. That means that they are at the highest level when it comes to their accountability measures. He has one year left in this school. He started off in a charter school. I thought I had won the lottery. Did not. The pandemic hit when he was in kindergarten. It was, okay. So we moved him to our neighborhood school. I'm, if you want to say, lucky enough to live in an area where the school is a high-performing school. But once he leaves elementary school, what are his options for middle school? We talked about what's happening with our middle schools. Where would be comparable for him to go and continue that high level of education? So I would like to see a superintendent who has a plan for providing quality education for all of our children continuously from K throughout. Yes. Yes. And again, I'm a school educator. I'm here, so full transparency. But when it comes to what's best for our kids, we're not there yet. Our educators work hard. We all work hard. It's not an easy task. Mm. However, what is it that we need to do? We can't keep doing the same thing because it's not working. Oh, yeah. it's right. not working. Sonia Shaw. Good evening, everyone. Well, I first came in just to listen, but through all my listening, I have decided to speak. Come on. I'm a community resident. My children are grown. They do not attend the Springfield Public Schools. They did not. And my grandchildren do not attend the Springfield Public Schools. But I still love my community. Yeah. I work hard in my community to make sure everyone around us get the best of everything, including education. Mm -hmm. I would love to have my grandchildren come to those Springfield Public Schools, but they cannot. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that the higher-ups that make the decision has their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things, you know, transparent, you can't do that. It's not what you say, it's what you do. That's right. And they That's right. On what we have seen as a community, I grew up, I am a product of the Springfield Public Schools. I have lived in this community since I have been two years old. So I have seen a lot. So 
First of all, I'm very disappointed that this process was rushed. Mm -hmm. I attended the Springfield um, School Committee meeting where that, well, we weren't able to speak, but some of our school committee members expressed that concern of rushing the process. Mm -hmm. We do, we need someone, as so many people have said, that is going to represent us. And they're going to have to have concern for our children because they're our next leaders. Right. So they have to have concern. And our young folks. <laughs> I have the pleasure of interacting, working with a lot of the Putnam Academy students in our mentor program, that a program that I actually manage. And we encourage them. We want them to grow. But how are they going to grow when they're stifled? Mm -hmm. So what I am hoping that you do here today is listen to everyone. Mm -hmm. And not just in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. But take what they have said to heart and reconsider because you have the power to determine where we go from here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right. so that's just my hope as a lifelong member of this commission. Amen. Tara Drummer. You just here to listen. And I would read the next person's name, but they also put not speaking. So <laughs> Stephen Howard. No, no, the person whose name I didn't read said they weren't speaking. Uh, Stephen, you might, if you want to be on camera, maybe just move over a little bit. Oh, here. Right here. Wait. Well, this way. This way. This way. Okay. Uh, first thing that I think that the superintendent should be considering or putting into effect I pay 56. A neighbor just pulled their children out of one of the schools, which I will not name, because whenever she went, when they went to pick up or drop off the children, the parents got a contact high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, with the laws that been, that's been passed, there should be some sort of stipulation that this is a no smoking zone. So once you're within a certain, whatever it is, 100 yards within the school, no problem. Uh, when we and our children see police officers, the first thing that should enter our minds is protect and serve, mm -hmm. not police brutality. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks here don't know that the first police precinct established was back in the days of slave catching. That's right. I don't want to get into that. Mm -hmm. This community is made up mainly of Latino, Latinas, African-American. Why don't, don't we have African studies? I didn't say African-American. Mm -hmm. Civilization began in Egypt, okay. Ethiopia. Some have said 6,000 years, some said more like 10,000 years. The Greek philosophers, they went to Egypt and Ethiopia, which is on the African continent, which was changed to the Middle East. So those people are no, con no longer considered Africans. So you don't see the greatest philosophers that's recorded went into these nations to learn what they learned. Civilization, first doctors, first buildings, aqua system. Why don't our children know this? There are some people here who don't even know that there were at least seven female pharaohs. Some people here, they think that Cleopatra was white because Elizabeth Taylor portrayed her 
So here you have two of the most powerful white leaders at that time fighting over the love of a black queen, oh. a black pharaoh. Why, 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 when, when we think about Cleopatra, we see, see a white woman, not a black woman. Mm -hmm. Imhotep, the first medical recorded doctor. Why don't our children know this? As long as our children, and as long as we don't know this, how can we have the potential to excel? There are a whole other history I could give you, but the thing is it should be in the schools. I shouldn't be here talking about it. And it should start at 3K. Yeah, absolutely. 3 to 12. And then when people want to go higher, then they extend that. Why are children being taught about Nancy stories like Alice in Wonderland and all this kind of stuff when we have such great history that is not taught? And I'm not just talking about our community. I'm talking about everybody so that then they could respect us for what That's we have right. accomplished. That's right. And don't start looking at us as though we're second or third class citizens. Unless things like this is introduced into this educational system, it's going to continue to fail. Right now, one of the students at uh, STIC last year, she was waiting on a patent for a wristwatch that would detect if you're having a medical emergency like a heart attack or stroke and warn you ahead of time. A black Latina, well, I should say a Latina. Now, this is just an example of the potential that we have in our communities. The, 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 the person, people may not like what I'm about to say because maybe they're anti-vaxxers, but the COVID vaccine developed by a black woman. Going back, Neil Armstrong says he's not gonna get on that rocket to go to the moon unless that black woman who was one of the computers at that time said, yeah, it's safe to go. There's so much history that we have that are not being taught in schools. And unless the commissioner or whoever, the superintendent or whatever it is, unless they have this in their heads and intend to implement it in the schools, it's not going to work. A couple more things and I'm done. We should have private public funding so that our children, when they go to school, they can have science labs. Our children from stores, they know more about the, the, about the cell phone and computer than we do. They should have science labs that's basically geared towards computers. Some of the biggest corporations in the, in, in the world too, for over 25 years have been trying to recruit gamers. You know, you play too much, you don't play too much computer games. They are looking for gamers because they want them to be the next generation of computer programmers. Our children don't know this. They only see it as, 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 as fun. They don't see it as a career. They don't see it as a, 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 that, that they could be the next Bill Gates. One more thing and I'm done. You're faster. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> We should have more apprenticeship programs and for recruiting so that when our children reach at a certain level, I think uh, from this, you know, Councilwoman Govan <laughs> said a while ago that, you know, she learned how to use the hammer for the I grew up, you know, putting up walls and all kinds of stuff. When I was like eight, nine years old. If we, if we tell our children the only way that you could make it in life is to be a doctor or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, when, you, when your bathroom uh, is tough, yeah. when it starts to back up, you're not calling the doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your car breaks down, you're not calling the dentist. These things are things that we depend on, on like every single day of our lives, but we are not bearing our youth 
to those jobs because why? They got to work with your hands. We want you to work with your minds. Anyway, I said, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Tracy Whitfield. Yeah, Tracy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 Hi, colleague. Um, so I'm City Councilor Tracy Whitfield. Uh, I'm just going to start by saying I was born and raised in the city of Springfield, and I'm a proud product of the public, uh, Springfield Public Schools, so we can be whatever we want to be. I am super proud of everybody that spoke today, and even if you didn't and you're here from Portland, I'm not all of y'all in the workshop, you can set it up now. <laughs> and then I want to thank everybody in the community that was brave and bold enough to speak, because sometimes you work in the public schools and you got a fear of speaking out because of retaliation, and it happened to me. So I worked for the Springfield Public Schools, so I'm going to tell my true story. I worked for the Springfield Public Schools in the Finance Department, right? But I didn't speak the way they wanted me to speak, and I spoke up for Black and Latinos that they would um, degrade mm. and, and in City Hall and in the school department. Mom. I wrote their whole capital budget, right? I was on probationary period because I transferred from finance to City Hall to the school department. I was doing great with my principals. Everybody had my cell phone number. I was helping put out fires that white male folks in my same department later on got promoted for to budget mm. directors and so on even though they made the mistake that I fixed because I took over the school. Mm -hmm. okay. so fix I fixed them. And they got promoted, mm. white male, and I got terminated. Mm. And they set me up to terminate me. That's right. Because I'm calling out the mistakes that the person made. So I want a superintendent that is fair. I worked in finance and I've seen how good teachers, great teachers, educators, principals didn't get the raises of the favorites. Come on. Okay. Mm. I'm saying it loud. They did not get the same raise, promotions, advancements of the favorites. Mm. It's Come on. It's called nepotism and cronyism. Mm. I want a superintendent that don't do that. Right. Okay. And so I want a superintendent that is passionate and have the love for our students and community as everybody here that spoke. I want someone who is, who has who can transition us out of the empowerment zone, who is innovative, like Holyoke, they're transitioning out. Why are we stuck? If they can do it, we can do it. We got to challenge the status quo. When I talk about status quo, I'm going to the mayor, who is the head of the school committee and the head of our city. It has been too long, okay? They have relationships and favors. I've seen it from working inside of city halls and the school department, and I've seen it as a city council. Mm -hmm. And anywhere I go, I'm going to fight against that mm -hmm. because it's time for a change in Springfield. That's, that's right. The way that we're going to call whoever he is out. That's right. I'm going to call him out. I'm going to put it in a press release and you can be mad at me because I can take it. That's what I signed up for. That's what I was voted in for. And that's what I'm going to do. So thank you for telling the truth and telling yeah. the truth. That's right. Um, yeah. I want the process restarted like Councilor yeah. Govan. I want all applications, whether they were weeded out or not to be reviewed by the committee. Mm. We need to see that they didn't meet all qualifications. That's right. Buckley, Phillips, and somebody else, Richardson, <laughs> Richardson and they right. are consultants of the Springfield Public Schools. They are. That's they, right. So they are not a private outside law firm. Come on, thanks. I work in finance. I seen them in the contracts. Mm. They do a lot of litigation for the Springfield Public Schools. They are not new. If you guys would have went out and got somebody new that's not affiliated with Springfield Public Schools, I could agree with that. That I cannot agree with. So if they were weeded out, let the committee see the ones that were weeded out so we can prove they were weeded out. That's right. There's a lot of things that everybody else said in here. I'm just going to say a real quick representation of what we look like in the community. And that means LGBTQAI, and that means Black, Latino, whatever it is, disabilities, veterans, let's be inclusive and equitable. I want a superintendent that's innovative, that makes substantial, transformative changes to our school system. Okay? We can do it. Right. It's not good enough to tell that we lowered dropout rate and improved graduation rate. I work in workforce development and stick in HCC. 
Half of the students that came from Springfield Public Schools could not pass the entry test and had to take remedial cuts. Mom, say it. Say it. That's right. So this is facts. So everything I'm telling you is because of my experience in the city of Springfield. And it has got to change. And the only way that it's going to change is if we change it. That's we have a voice and we have to continue to use it. So we have this big old meeting and we have them all throughout the community. And this process stays the exact same. Right then we have a problem. And you guys are going to also be held accountable That's because right. by the vote. That's right. right? Next year is your time. Mm -hmm. right. um, and so I'm just going to conclude by saying a holistic approach to learning. Mm -hmm. We need that. Okay. That innovation is key. We need to include educators and families and staff and anyone in the community that wants to be involved with building a better sustainable environment, right? And then I want a superintendent that has a relationship outside of Sarno, his administration. Yes. Dina Cooper. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Principal of Franklin Honor Academy. I first want to say to my students, thank you for constantly speaking out and to all the other students of the city. Thank you for letting your voice be heard because that is how change is made. So what I would like to see in the superintendent is one that, as many have said, is inclusive, who understands the cultures that we are presented with here in our city. One that has the ability to unite parents, families, students, teachers, as well as all educators. Someone mentioned it. I want a superintendent that when there's a national event that's happening, that stands up and ensures that every student in the city of Springfield is offered those resources from a flagship uh, college in our city that is providing resources where schools don't have to spend their money to ensure that students can see an eclipse, mm -hmm. that everyone should have had access to those glasses on yesterday. I want a superintendent who's able to build partnerships with local businesses outside of just a small circle of dealings that happen. I want someone who's going to challenge the status quo, yeah. someone who's going to stand up and speak out, even if it means standing alone. I want one that has a clear and coherent vision of instruction and culture and not afraid to do that despite what others may say. I want a superintendent who is able to be able to be there and aware of the politics in our city, but not so engaged in the politics that they're afraid to speak out. Mm, I want a on. superintendent that is able to collaborate, that's able to build visionaries and has good communication and is an agent of change. Mm -hmm. I want someone who's going to stand for our students, um, their mental health. Many times our students are crying for help mm -hmm. and we are being told as building leaders it is our responsibility to provide support for them. This is a national epidemic that we're dealing with with our students. We need to look at our code of conduct. It has not been updated for a few years. We need to look at the trends in our community. Our students are vaping. Our students are smoking. And how do we respond to that? Suspension is not the way. Suspension is sending them back out into the streets to tell them just go ahead and continue to do it. We've got to get innovative with how we will partner to make sure that things are better for our students. Now we have to have the voices of the people in the building at the table when these decisions are made. They cannot be made by lawyers. They cannot be made by outside people. They need to be made by the people who are in these buildings every day. Our teachers need to be paid. We need a superintendent who's going to recognize that they would prefer to take a pay cut before and allow their teachers to And the last thing is that I want a superintendent that's going to be visible, mm -hmm. one that's going to be present in the events that happen in our communities, mm -hmm. not just for the moment of face and show, mm -hmm. but truly involved, because that's what shows. And I think um, Ms. Whitfield said it, someone who acts. We can say all things every day. We can say a bit of truth and cover false in, uh, things that are not true mm -hmm. by one ounce of truth. We need someone that's going to be 99% transparent, mm. visible, and available for our students. Thank yes. you. Sharonda R. Mm. 
Shireen? Shireen? Is it Shireen? Shireen, all right. That's fine. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I still hear you. Okay, so my question is, so you like stated that the public was asked about their input. When and where did you want to do versus loud and proud of you? Like a little, little snippet. That was that. That was one question. Um, is there any that are supposed to be you know, doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. I'm not, I probably don't say it correctly. Why are they at any of these meetings? Right. I don't understand that. If right. they're the ones that's supposed to be listening to the community and putting our input, and we have all the eloquent speakers, why is nobody showing up? Are they getting paid for this as a volunteer so they just don't want to show up? Is it because they can watch the recording? But why is, it, why is that not, why are they not here? I don't understand that. And my last question is, who chose the law firm? Who chose the agency? The Again, was committee. that the public? Was that the people? I, I don't So if you could just answer those, that would be my question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. We're here to take input, number one. The, <clears throat> and I'll do deference to the, the screening committee. They have a very specific role. Their job is to interview and recommend to the school committee, into the final candidates and make recommendations. They are keeping themselves aware of what's going on. There's been some that have come here, there's some that have just watched it, but they but they have a separate role. You, we want you to be telling the school committee, and, and they're just going to give names to the school committee. It's the school committee has to make the choice. This input is going to be shared with the whole school committee so that the ones who are actually in the end of the day making the choice will get your input to see what you to see everything that everybody wanted us wanted considered. So that's where this information is going. Are 13 people public? Are the 13 people public? Are the 13 people public? Are they, do you, you mean their names? Like, public? Yeah, like they're yeah, they're on the website. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're there. So, so if they're not making a decision, are they getting paid? What is that for? If you're making no, they're, they're, it's not a paid committee. They are, they were, they volunteered, they were elected to serve on the screening committee. Their role is to interview the people who have who have gotten the, met the minimum criteria and then send forward to the school committee their recommendations of between three and five candidates that the school committee should consider. They, pardon me? This the school this committee did. We took, they were, there was, People people applied to be on it. Um, it was open for a long for a number, for a long period of time. It was advertised. Um, they applied. We had so it's individuals who applied on their own, uh, and then all their names were given, and they were elected by category. They're elected by parent. They're elected by uh, community member, business member, administrators. Uh, teachers, so they were. That's they're elected by their category. The school committee elected them. No, these no, three no, no. Did. These three people screened so, yeah. them and rated them and decided who the thirteen people were going to be. It's these three people that did it, so, not the whole school committee. Okay, right. so these three, you did it, and then you, and then they're going to come back to you. But they're not at the committees to hear the people. I don't know. Am I understanding this wrong? Maybe y'all can explain it to me. But some, 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 some of them are here. Taking them. There, there, there have yeah, been here. there have been members who have come, and there are members who are just observing it, um, because they're they're hearing what you're saying, and I'm sure they're taking it, it into consideration as they do their interviews, because their interviews they when they, they have to make up their mind as to. Here's the individuals that we think you should consider to be superintendent. Um, that's their role. That's what they're being asked to do. That's a very serious undertaking. We interview them. Uh, thank you. Um, Rhonda Hall Reynolds. Okay. Oh, there she is. So um, I was here at the last one. Love you back. Right? And so um, 
I'm, I'm going to start off with saying if we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we always got. Come on now, right? And at the last meeting, we implored, like we begged, we said, we got to do something different. We got to put our, our young people on this, you know, and we push uh, college and career readiness, and they are ready to, to take on this committee, and they've gotten no answers to it. Now we hear that people who are on the committee are not necessarily parents, but they're in a role of a parent. And so then we had the pushback of saying, hey, let's start over again. And then we got the pushback from you that said, hey, I don't think that they, they can do that because the lawyer said we shouldn't do that. And so now we're still in this dilemma and we keep having these meetings and I feel like the smoke and mirrors has to stop because don't do this just to say you did it so you are by law in compliance with the process yet the people who are here said we don't like this process and it needs to change. And so I'm going to implore that you actually make other changes and other decisions because right now they're students. And as uh, the Councilor Whitfield said, in a few years, y'all will be voters. And I want you to remember who listened to you, who pushed you aside, and you make a choice and you make a decision to cast your vote if not run for that position. Yes. I'm part of the SEA, and we have um, negotiations coming up. And so the things that I want to see from the superintendent who stepped into that role is somebody who said, I value the teachers and the educators who are, who are in front of me and to go out into this community and give so much of themselves, so much of their own resources, and I want to support them in the best way that I possibly can. I want somebody who looks like us. I want somebody who looks like you. I want somebody you can say, I'm going to go to him and he's going to listen to me. Or her. Or her. That's fine. But I, I want that for you because it's going to be really important that your voice is heard. And not, and not only that, I want somebody who takes our health into consideration. So one of the things, um, we have a huge community um, of obese children, of people who um, have a lot of health concerns. And so we wanna make sure that what we're giving our children, because a lot of them only eat breakfast and lunch at the school, and they don't get a chance to eat any, any other time, we wanna make sure that you get a good lunch, right? Yeah. Something that you really want, right? <laughs> and so I say that to say that we got to do something different. If you continue on with this process and you keep having these meetings, but you don't listen to the people and you don't include everybody, you're going to get somebody who we don't approve of. And I would hate that. For it to be said that you had the opportunity to change things and you wouldn't. Not that you couldn't, that you wouldn't. Right. Because we're asking you to do it. We are voters, we are people in the community, we love our babies. My son graduated from Putnam, I graduated from Commerce. I'm a person who's been in this community, I love my community, and I want us to do better. I want to make sure that when I finally have some grandbabies and you know that I can look back and say we voted somebody in who really changed Springfield for the better. 
Because right now we're not the bad. They're the leftovers. And we don't want to be the leftovers. We want to be the best. Mm-hmm. And we want you to you to smile when you think about Springfield. And we shouldn't have to go to social media to put it out there. <laughs> and again, we know that you all have emails. Nobody was 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 emailed about this process. So if it's written from the beginning, okay. it's written. Mm-hmm. No matter which way you try to spin it. It's great. And when we think about it, our people are going to say, eh, it was great. That's one of the reasons why they don't vote, right? Because they think it's great. Right? Or oh, they so know who they wanted from the beginning. Oh. And they went through the process and still got who they wanted. So I went to a school committee. I know I ain't on the list. Sorry, Rhonda. Go but, ahead. Um, I, I listened to some of the school committee meetings that I couldn't attend physically. And I heard a lot of debate when you guys were debating about Buckley Richardson and Jalinas and all of that. And you kept referencing what you did last time. So I understand the concept of not reinventing the wheel. Sometimes we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we also don't got to do things the same way you always did it either. You don't have to say, because we did this the last time we searched, this is the way we're going to do it. It does not have to be. There can be innovation. There can be change. So even if you go on this path, I think my only request is if you came into this process thinking this is who we ultimately want, you need to open up your mind and not have that mindset. You need to not have that mindset. You need to say whoever these candidates are, your mind needs to be open because we all know politics and we all know the way things work. Sometimes there's somebody that's a second or a third and you already think you want that person. And so you go through all of this stuff and that person gets the job. When that happens, everybody's going to say, we knew. And you wasted our time. So keep your minds open and do not just go with whoever you guys got in mind already. I think that is the concern of the community that you all know who you want. And that's who you're gonna. That's who you're gonna pick, no matter how this process works. So I hope that's not gonna happen, and I hope you will have as school committee members that's gonna make the decision that your minds are open, and that when the interview process happens, it's a fair and legitimate process, and that you're taking this feedback into consideration. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And I know that to be true because I've applied for different positions mm-hmm. and they came back and said, hey, we already know who we want for that position. Absolutely. So don't even bother. Yeah. So I know that to be true in the city of Springfield. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. it continues to be a process. Mm-hmm. I've been in the system for over 15 years and this continues to be a thing. So stop thinking it be a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. You can't elect the same people and expect different results. I'm going to hold to make the changes happen. So we just heard y'all. Yeah, you got you got some papers mm-hmm. ready, right? You got we got we got some people. You know what? Here goes this. We got your front, your back, and your sides. Thank you. Um, we don't have anybody else on the list, but we do. Oh, there's another list. Ayanna Crawford. Is Ayanna here? Yeah. Well, first of all, good evening, everyone. I'm probably going to reiterate everything that you said. This is my community, too. I've lived here, born and raised here, a Springfield uh, public school student graduate. I appreciate the process, but I have changed gears a bit. I am the founder of It's Your Turn, Take the Mic. It's a public speaking program for girls. My girls could not be here today, but I have their questions. So I want to take a moment and read their questions, and then I have some questions of my own. So the questions that they have are, they want to share with the search committee that they want more mental health services in schools. We want a youth on the search committee. Why are you rushing the process? Why is the process being rushed? We need a superintendent that believes in diversity, inclusion, and equity. 
understands the importance of cultural diversity of our society, understands cultural responsiveness and learning for teachers and PD. They're asking that resource officers be replaced with community members from different ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that again. They're asking that the resource officers be replaced with community members from different ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Why, and they want to know, this is a question that they ask, why didn't we have an assistant superintendent replaced after Lydia retired? This is what they're asking me. And so I'm going to ask them. And they said, and this is great, they're thinking the same thing you said. Mm -hmm. They said, start the process over. Mm -hmm. These are 10, 11, 12, and 13 year olds telling me this. Um, and we need someone that has worked in urban schools and they need a clear pedagogy. They need to understand what that is. Also, we need someone that understands how to fund urban schools. Right? And this is something that I add and we try to talk about it a bit. We need to get school buildings that are not environmentally sound and or safe offline and rebuilt. So those are their questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so my one question that I have as a mother, as a grandmother, as a community person, as a former Springfield Public School student, as a, a believer in the city um, with all the other things that go on, is why are we rushing? Why are we rushing? There are so many districts around the country that do not rush in this regard. I've never heard of this. And so that is my concern. Why are we rushing? Why we're told, this is what we're told, is that by July 1, we need to have the superintendent in place. Why? So that's my question. Why are we rushing? And if we and, 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 and could we conceivably start the process over? Could we look at how do we, in the interim, because we know organizations have interim CEOs and interim this and interim that, could we conceivably have an interim superintendent until we that find- doesn't, That doesn't plan to apply for the job. Wait, 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 that wait, won't wait, apply. wait, 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 an interim superintendent as we continue the process to find someone yeah. that the community and others feel comfortable with. So that's it, that's all, I'm done. Yes. I'm not sure if that's Walter, but the last name is Cook. Okay. Cook? Cook. Last name Cook? Oh, he left, okay. Uh, Jessica Roski. Okay. Thank you. Liz Olga Olgavi. It's Ogilvy. Ogilvy. You know me. I do. <laughs> and I don't know why I mispronounced your name because I soon as I saw your face. Lady. But I have a policy systems and environmental change thinker who is working to deconstruct white supremacy culture through food. We need a superintendent who's going to be brave enough to do the same. Because, take a deep breath, because Mr. Collins, I've been watching you for years. A white man working in a majority BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, People of Color school district, you have not built the core muscle you need to do. The difficult conversations around race. Just take a deep breath. Some of the challenges that we're talking about are systems. Symptoms, I'm sorry. It's like we talk about food and we say we live in a food desert. We live in a food apartheid system and a food desert is a symptom. These questions and problems are endemic to school in many cultures. Ms. Gresham, you know I have nothing but love and respect for you. Thank you. Mr. Collins is repeatedly elected because he lives in a ward of people who look like him mm -hmm. and who will elect him and whose children do not attend our school. Mm -hmm. If I could run against mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. some Why of them do. do. If All I of my children it, attended Springfield they Public They don't schools. attend anymore. In the well, they graduated. Yeah. Please don't rebate and rebut me because this is about my time. And I pay your salary as a taxpayer. I lead two nonprofit organizations. I raise one and a half million dollars a year. 
much smaller numbers than the district, but that's just zeros. We need someone who understands, as Councillor Whitfield and other people have said, <laughs> finance. And they have to think about fixing our district from a policy level, which is going to the school committee and saying, we need change. It means going to the city council. Ms. Gresham, Mr. Gonzalez, I am begging you, do not sign another contract with Sedexo that you haven't read. And I don't raise money for that. Just let me finish this. I don't raise money to build homegrown. I was a dog and pony show for them. I like Pat Roach. We had a not lovely relationship and it grew. I worked hard with Tim Gray. During the pandemic, I bought, brought, raising private money, not city money, $970,000 yes. of fresh produce and got it directly into the hands of families. I built the school garden here, the school garden at Homer Street, the school garden at Rebecca Johnson, the school garden at, I didn't build Zanetti, but I managed it. My son was a student there from pre-K to eighth grade. There's a fix at Renaissance and Zanetti. I know I benefited from it and I've spent my life since then atoning for that. When you are an employee of the district, particularly in a school leader position, your kid gets a slot before the lottery happens. I know because my kid was one of them because my husband was at the time an assistant principal at Commerce High School. I don't say that to be proud or to, to brag, but people will know I've read for years in eight of the schools for the, through the reading program. And we have the school garden program we have now because of the work that I did I wrote the first, helped write the first USDA grant to get salad bars in our school, and they're not even used. They're not even used. Our school district is reimbursed by the federal government at yes. upwards of $110,000 a day. If I got all the abuelas, titis, aunties, grandmas that I knew and started a business, we would feed our children better than we do. We are in a public health crisis. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, some of you know them because they gave us all the numbers during COVID. They rank county health. Hamden County is ranked last and has been since they started ranking. Mm -hmm. We have the highest diabetes, hypertension, mm -hmm. obesity rates in the Commonwealth. The same is true for our children. We have children who have type two diabetes, mm -hmm. not the autoimmune kind. We could change that if we fed them better. Mm -hmm. And if we fed them better, they would be attentive in class. You cannot give them sugary foods mm -hmm. and expect them to not run around like maniacs. Right. I know, because I got one in my house. And then they crash at 10 o'clock and they're labeled inattentive wow. and disrupted. So I speak about it from a food issue and tell the truth about the dropout rate. The Economist is a walking wonky white magazine, I read it because I have a master's degree in economics from MIT and I was trying to read it. It lifted out Springfield mm. as being one of the districts that softened True. the edges. True. True. And so what that means, if you go to the district website and you look at how many freshmen enroll in commerce, these are not accurate numbers, I'm gonna use round numbers because we can work with. You might see 400 kids. Then you look at the sophomore year mm. and it's down to three, four. And then you look at junior year, and it's in the 200s. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the senior year, and they said, we had a 100% graduation rate because they count from the beginning of the senior year till the end of the senior year. So because I'm a walk, because after I finished my master's degree at MIT, I went to Harvard and got another one. I grew up on Lebanon Street. This is what you should be producing. I took six students from Springfield Honors to Washington, D.C. They advocated with Nancy Pelosi, with Representative Neal, with Rep McGovern, and with Rep Ayanna Presley. Why are outside people doing that and we're not doing that in our own district and there's video to show it? You should have been showing that at a school committee and you should all understand what is possible for our children. This young man should have not your job, he should be the superintendent or the mayor or anyone else he wants to be. And you guys need to be getting in the place for And all of his classmates, 
The kids at Springfield Honors have a beautiful floor and beautiful bathrooms, and the kids at Commerce are using bathrooms that were used 30 years ago. What message are you sending to our children when you say, this is what you're worth, this is how we value you? He speaks Spanish. We are a majority Latinx city and friend. Puerto Ricans are black. We'll have that conversation another. We need people who understand the lived conditions of the lives of our students. That's not talking, talking. Mm. That means maybe they've had the lived experience in another city of living in a community like Springfield. I haven't lived here my whole life. And it's one of the reasons I'm really good at my job because I went to other places, saw what was possible, came here, built relationships and partnerships that helped me to do the things that I do. Holy Own Public Schools, a superintendent, meets monthly with people from the community like me. Mm. Personally called me up and said, I hear about your work. I know you built some gardens in Holy Oak. I know you think about things more than food. Come be a part of this council. Mm. Why don't we have that in Springfield? That's right. Five years before the pandemic, I worked my way up to Superintendent Warwick to demonstrate that our families could have had low cost cable from Comcast. I went to my students' principal, Tara Clark at Zanetti. I finally got to Michelle Vault, who helped me get to the right people. Our kids could have been digitally connected years before the pandemic, and then we would have been ready when it hit. Hmm. I just got a few more things, like Mr. Howard. The thing is, Mr. Howard was talking about our endemic of the founding of our country. My family's been in this city 105 years. I built a garden on the lot that was Primus Mason's homestead, where his house was turned down. <laughs> had to buy the lot with my own money from the city just to commemorate this space. We're still containing our children in the same way we did, systemically, I mean. You have many school leaders. You all the way from the school leaders to the parents to the people who feed our children. We have amazingly committed people, but we have a construct that holds up a white supremacy construct. Mm. And that's a hard thing to hear when you're a white person, except you can get free of it by doing the work you need to do. I called Desi and Desi said, you could start this process over. You could appoint a good uh, interim superintendent and we would probably accept anybody. I'd like to ask you a question that I want you to respond to. How many applicants did you have for the roles you selected? I mean, the, the people who are supposed to be listening who are your personal advisors. And it was just a bad management move to not have them there. That was discretion. Are you talking you about the screening committee? About that. I, I'm not sure what, how many people applied for screening? How many people applied to what? be on the committee? The screening committee? Yes. Oh, yes. oh, no, there were oh, wow. 40. And, and you all read all of those applications. They, they came in and they spoke to us. All 40. Yeah, and all, some of them chose not to, some was which, in my opinion, was a mistake. But they, they came in and they spoke. Either well, Did you use the robocall system to let parents know that that, was, that opportunity no, existed? No. The phone calls we get about snow or flooding or... Did you use that system, yes or no? I don't know. I don't believe it was you. I think some schools did. But not, but not that, for the district. But when, when the district makes a decision to close because of weather, who says, send this call? I'm going to assume maybe it's the mayor or the superintendent. The superintendent. And it didn't occur to Mr. Warwick or any of those around him to do that same thing for this process? That's a rhetorical question, obviously. <laughs> what is the racial makeup of uh, the demographics of oh, oh, uh, the, the screening committee. Yes. I, it's pretty diverse group. I'm. I specifically want to know yeah. how many people are there. There are Let's there see. are thirteen. And you chose them, and you didn't come with a list prepared to tell us what they look like or any of that. There, there are thirteen people on the committee. Ms. Presham, how many are black? Thirteen. 
I have to think about that. I, no, that's, from what I, I can think tell, it's four like, or five. I think it's maybe five. Or five. Like how many are Latinx? One. In a 65% majority community, I my kid is half Dominican by birth. He's my child by adoption. But I don't have... What I'm saying to you is that people who have lived and experienced know how to screen differently. I read resumes for the USDA all the time. I know what to look for. We need to make sure every school leader understands that when a parent gets called and they don't come to school, that maybe that's a parent who was also failed by the school. And when they walk through those doors, all that fear comes right back up. And it's very hard for them to sit and have a conversation about their child because they have been marginalized their entire lives. Someone who hasn't done the work to understand systemic racism like yourself cannot pick a person who understands that. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. And so we tell these young people to get arms and go vote. It's time for you to retire, bless your heart. We need a change. You have a no confidence vote from this small group of people. Am I right or wrong? Right. right. So own that and say you gave good service and get out of the way because you are causing harm, perhaps unintentionally, but what you need to do, are you a man of faith? Yes, I am. So a Catholic, I'm going to assume. You assume correctly. I am too. We can read each other. At the end of the day, after I say the Our Father and the Hail Mary, I say, God, did I do what you want me to do every day? If you can answer that, because that's what you need to do is look at a list when I am imploring you to hear me. Because it's one thing to say, I, am I listening. hear you. Are you learning? Am I learning? Yes. I'm learning that you have no idea what my background is. You've made many statements about who I am as a person, I have. what I've lived through, and you have no idea what my background is. That's what it, yes, what I am. What I know is what you voted for. What I know is what you support. And when white people respond like that, this is just what it is. And this is not because I'm black. I understand race because I've done the work. And that is why as a black woman, I can acknowledge that we are a majority Latinx city and our children need to be better represented because when we all do better, we all do better. I hit a nerve and you showed it and I wish you goodwill, but it's you, time for you to go. You hit a nerve only when you move forward. There's one more person. No, there's, there's one more, but there's four more here. Uh, Jonathan Smith. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Jonathan Smith, the Executive Officer of Rising Geniuses. So Just speak a little louder. They can't hear you. Back. Yeah, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Rising Geniuses. So I'm here on the behalf to say what I want to see in a superintendent for the city of Springfield, born and raised here all my life. So what I would really like to see is, you know, with funding and everything, you know, I don't know the exact numbers, but I want trade programs to come back in our schools. Yes. They've been cut out, you know, I study, you know, welding, carpentry, and I'm a mechanical engineer and design the right aircraft wing of the aircraft for the F-119. Yeah. Right. Okay. With that being said, I want to see trade programs coming back. There's a lot of potential in this city. There are bright kids. And sometimes like in the classrooms, you know, we try to take all these kids and put them all on one level. Mm -hmm. All these kids are on different levels. You know, mm -hmm. some are visionary learners, some are auditory learners, some learn by doing. I'm a visual learner, you know what I mean? So it's like, you have different styles of learning, you know, but for example, like I went to college, my teacher showed me how to do a math. I went all the way up to linear algebra. You know, I struggled in that. But one of my teachers said, you know, well, you're not doing it the way I taught you. But I learned differently, so I shouldn't be punished for the way that I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, like, I, I want a superintendent who is not only transparent, but has community talks with the community. 
I just don't want somebody who's on a Zoom call with the community or, you know, just waving to me at, you know, like I said, Stone Soul Festival. I want somebody that's willing to do the work, do the hard work. You know, a space, it's just a venue. But what we do in that space is what the work needs to be done. So I want somebody who's a hard worker. I want somebody who's in those school system at these kids' games. Hey, how are you doing? How's your mental health doing? How's your family? You know, I want connections for the city of Springfield to like not only build communities, but build families up either. Because to be honest, we got a lot of great educators in the city, you know, and honestly, they put a lot of hard work, you know, and sometimes there's budget cuts that they don't have for materials, you know, and everything like that, you know, but we have to support our educators, you know, not only with just the supplies they have in the classrooms, but we also need to supply them with the mental health resources as long with our children. So I feel like I want to see that and like our superintendent and I really want to see somebody that is really driven for like our community. You know, we got a lot of kids out of here coming, you know, with, you know, to different degrees in college, fashion designers. We got Justin Haynes. I mean, we got myself, Rising Geniuses, you know, and like I said, one of my reasons for starting this business is because resources like trade schools are getting cut. But I'm going to be here today. And if the work's not going to get done, you know, by a superintendent, I'm taking it upon myself to teach every kid that I can, teach them engineer, put them on a path. I'm a coach. I'm a coach, freshman coach for commerce basketball. I'm coaching AAU at Higher Expectations at my close friend Jordan Almore's gym. I'm very active in the community, you know? And it's not so much about the individual, it's about the collective, you know? But choosing that recipient for that position mm. can't just be for the individual. It has to be for the collective. That's right. And that's all I have to say. Mark Dorsey. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, hopefully it was I think I'm just buzzing in and buzzing out real quick, but the, uh, the passion uh, with the students, especially Naomi Edwards, uh, I, spoke, I spoke last time too. There's a lot of misinformation going on. A lot of mis misinformation going on. The misinformation needs to be cleared up. Guys that look like me, we're the minority in Springfield. We're not the majority. It's changing. As is the whole world is changing. And change is going to come. School committee member, chairman, college. Change is going to come. Whether we want to read the book or whether we want to be in the book. Mm. There was a district attorney 15 years ago in Hennepin County, Minnesota, and guess what she did? She went with Mr. Status Quo, right? Mm. And she failed to indict a Minneapolis policeman whose name was Derek Schott. Ooh. And we all know what happened there. Yeah. Change has to come. Right. You can't continue to do this. It's not going to work. Change is a must. It's a must in the world. It's a must in people's lives. It, it change must come. And the only way it's going to come is by... Did you ever hear those meetings They say, we're going to invite the stakeholders. We're going to sit down and talk to the stakeholders. Who knows who the stakeholders are? <laughs> you, you, you. Everybody in this room is a stakeholder. So-called people that are stakeholders, they're not stakeholders. They're not stakeholders. We are the stakeholders. We have a vested interest in this community. The turnout has been unbelievable. Yes. And when that young woman got up and spoke at Central High School, believe me, the passion Naomi, Naomi Edwards had was unbelievable. So please, school committee member, chairman, Mr. Collins, please. I beg of you, I beg of you, please, be informed. Listen, these are not personal attacks. Believe me, they're not. We're just people that are just, they had a. Kareem 
Is it Kibojan? <laughs> Kibodia. I just want to keep this quick, but I want I feel like there's been sufficient uh backlash here today and at the other meetings. I just want to ask on record, what is the process to formally request or formally demand that the process the review process? Is there a process? No, that would have to come from the school committee putting in a, to go into the uh putting something on the agenda to do it. Okay. So I would put it on the agenda. School committee would have to say that they want anyone in that member can put it can say that they want something considered. Just, just so the public knows, we try to put two items on the agenda to deal with these things. The mayor, the superintendent, they told me we're not interested. I said, as the vice chairman, I can't put it on the agenda. They said, no, we disagree with you. We're not going to put it there. We want to get a legal opinion on what you're trying to do. It's not what I'm trying to do. We're trying to be sensible. And I think other of my colleagues are trying to be transparent as well to what the community came out at Central and told us, what the community's come out this evening and has told us. But again, there are a select few folks. They don't want to put it in committee agendas until they go through this preferential process, nor do they want to put it before the full body to get it done. So while the answer is procedurally, yes, it goes on an agenda, Let's take out what's happening behind the scenes so the public understands exactly who doesn't want these things to actually be deliberated on, let alone voted on. But let us have a conversation, to your point, sir, about this entire process. And we can't even get to that point. Once again, repeating something that's inaccurate doesn't make it accurate. That, that's your opinion. Thank you for stating it, too. You actually spoke to Mr. Kucher as well, who told you that you should... He said there are things that... Legal implications to the entire process and to individuals in the process, get an answer before you go and do, have the discussion. Let's, let's debate it out, Chris, because you have legal opinions, consultants I, that you brought forward. I'm not a lawyer. The folks that you guys have huddled within a corner, I can do the same thing. You, Let the public see that process you know being I have carried huddled, out. You know I have huddled with no one. Okay, let, let the public see it be carried out in public. That's what they're asking for. Not for us to do this behind the scenes, hide and seek game. And I, you know, that's really disrespectful to the whole committee. We have, we have an agenda, we had a, we had a, we had a person who advised the committee on the, on the technic and how to run a search. And then we had the other committee. They designed the search and the school committee accepted the search. There hasn't, no one's been, I know I haven't been involved in any discussions outside of it. We got the advice from the person who designed this search, take this step first before you do it. Make sure that you're not crossing, you're not abridging anybody's rights involved in the process before you go forward and then go forward. Get the opinion first. Again, the, we owe it to the community to do this even if it's a deliberation, to hear the opinion, we owe it to the city of Springfield to do that publicly. Yes, you can. Not for us to have as, these conversations as I, you know, where the you. public does not see it, nor the public does not hear it. And I think that's where we differ. Glenn Kucher can say, do it this way. The legal, the legal opinion of the attorney can dictate the process should be X, but ultimately as elected officials, we have to make a decision whether or not what an attorney says, what a consultant says, and be sensible to what the community says. And I have not disagreed with you on that, and you know that. I said, as soon as they give us we, this, we will have it explored and discussed in this committee. I, I said, we will do it. And you know I said that. Again, as the time is running as you have a screening committee in process. That's why I stood and sent forth a request, both to you, both to the mayor and the superintendent, that we deal with the matter at Thursday's meeting so that the public can be informed as to what is happening here and that we can deliberate. If we just say we're gonna wait on legal opinion, X, Y, and the other, the, the, the time clock is running and this is the potential for this whole thing to just implode. The clock is running. The interviews do not start till the first week of May. We have the time to do it correctly so that we're not abridging anybody's rights. Yeah. We have the time to do it correctly. Can you stop the process of the clock from running until you get a decision? We're going to have a decision. We will have a decision 
probably prior to our next meeting. So we will set a meeting to get that decision and discussion. We'll have it before the interview start. We'll have the decision, the process, the, the opinion will be made and given to us prior to the interviews even starting. Yeah, this, I'm just confused. I mean, we have, and I'm sorry, I have no thought, but I'm so confused listening to, we have three persons in front of us. One, your colleague has a disagreement with what's going on. There is dissension here. So I'm, I'm asking, since there's dissension, is there a way to stop, stop the clock, clear up whatever is going on, start the clock, when things are made clear, because this is this is I'm I'm a small person here, but this is seeming to me to be ridiculous. That's right. To continue to hear these comments, you got seven pieces of paper up here. Are they any different than what you've heard before at other places? There, there's there's some there's are some new with these seven pieces of paper. Transpe they, so they are. I just want to. We don't know now who gets the papers. They, they, all of the comments that are given are being recorded and are going to be provided to the school committee. Okay. And that, the school committee does what for all of these that's what That's what they use when they're going to evaluate who should be the superintendent. No. That's what the purpose of these meetings was. I, 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 so, I, just before I'm sorry. we continue, I, I want to make sure we're mindful of time. So, right now, people are expressing that they're feeling like they don't have rights in this process. I understand, like you said, you have to wait on the decision to come back from the lawyer. So I want to make sure that we are getting that, that you're keeping that in mind, that people currently right here feel like their rights are not being heard. And I'm just concerned whether or not we have to take legal action or recourse in order to be here. Mm. So, uh, so that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I can't tell if the first letter is, is a K. I think it's Keisha Guest. Elsie, oh, oh, it's. I just want to say that I am completely disgusted and disappointed mm. and disturbed by the way that multiple people here of the community are expressing their needs and their wants of a superintendent. And as soon as you feel threatened, you, you get very defensive. Mm. I am disgusted at the fact that we are begging, pleading, and showing our emotions up here, and you are completely dismissing them. This yeah. whole time that I have come into this room, there has been not one question answered mm -hmm. fully. There's mm -hmm. been beating around the bush mm -hmm. and very vague, I don't know, mm -hmm. but we need, we need answers. We need a change, and I need a change right now. I am a junior, I graduate next year, so this is not only for me, but this is for my eight-year-old little sister that is coming up in the SPN system, and I need a change for her as well. Just like prior um, comments, what what do these papers, what are these papers doing? You guys look at the paper, and there's no change happening. How are you going to sleep at night when there are so many things happening, and you are not changing them when mm. you can change them? It after this, there shouldn't have been a comment of I should have or we could have did this when you can do this and you can do it right now and you're choosing not to. Okay, there has been multiple meetings and I'm feeling like they're um, not a waste of time because voices are voices are being heard by some people, but I feel like they are a waste of time because why are we talking to you and you're not listening? It's going in one ear and out the other. And you guys are supposed to um, be a united front and come to the community as a united front. And one of your colleagues, is disagreeing with you and you are getting defensive with him as well and showing the community that you do not care about these about these yes. issues one of my issues also is why is the superintendent not here right now we are speaking okay. about the superintendent and he is not here he can listen online but it's not the same he needs to feel our emotions and i need to be talking to him not to you we i am the future of this community i will come up and I will be making decisions. We will be making decisions. You will not be making decisions in a couple of years. We are the future. You are not the future anymore. And I think that's what you're missing in this big picture that, um, that we 
we we are coming up. This is about us. This is not about you. This is about the students of Springfield and the people of Springfield. So for the people of Springfield to be coming to you with our concerns and for you to be dismissing them is is like like we said, it's ridiculous. And so what I'm just trying to say is I need a change and I want a change right now. Thank you. Jose Delgado. Thank you. 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 Thank that's a challenging time recruiting, retaining our educators that we uh, We often uh, educate them like we do. Hearing today, but I've also heard comments from my constituents about the process and about students being, being part of the process. Mm -hmm. And I understand this is not an easy process. Uh, however, this is probably the single most important decision that we as elected leaders are going to make. Because it's 25,000 students. It's the second largest issue in the state. And so they are our future. And so I want to ensure that wherever our next superintendent and the administration that they choose are thinking about our students and their future. So I've heard students talk about being part of the process. Advocated for themselves. That's what we want. We want to build a future. So I guess my question, guys, as my colleagues, is what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind in um, making these decisions? Mm -hmm. uh, one, including and inclusive of their wants and wishes, mm -hmm. or one that's going to leave it out. And I say that because you guys created this process. You guys can also adjust the process. That's right. Uh, and so I will say, lastly, you guys created a screening committee that you wanted to screen candidates. Allow them, to, allow them to do their job and screen the 11 candidates and let the best candidate rise to the top. Aaliyah Sylvester? Mardoche. Mardoche. I couldn't see the S. I'm sorry. No, there is no S. It's a C. I'm sorry. So there's been a lot of great points made tonight, and I just want to highlight one of the things that I see in this community. I'm a school counselor catered at Springfield Honors Academy, and I've seen so many opportunities go by for students. College fairs not attended by students. Scholarships not taken advantage of. And you know what that highlights to me? It highlights the disconnect. There's something going on within the education system that doesn't begin in the high schools. It begins at a lower. If we look at our test comprehension rates, right? Why are students scoring lower than 50% on comprehension? Not MCAS scores, but when you have educators saying that they have high school students reading at an elementary level, yeah. that highlights an issue within the district. That's a systemic issue, and that begins in the beginning, we need to have more connecting activities, not just telling students to do this, but helping them understand why, giving them a why. All the trade programs, right? all the resources, there are so many community partners, there are so many programs in the community, right? Not just special interest programs, right? But small businesses, people who are going to put into the community, who are gonna invest in our students and help them, nurture them and educate them. So they are, when they graduate, we're not just graduating students, we're gradu graduating students who are gonna succeed, people who are gonna come back and invest in the community, graduating well-educated people. You're not graduating students to graduate them. It's not about a number. These are people's lives. These are kids' lives. I didn't grow up in Springfield. I'm not from Springfield. I came here. I chose to stay here because I like the community. My kid loves it. These students here, they are what matters. <laughs> They're the future. 
So we need to have programming that's invested for them. You need to be in the schools communicating with the students. Actually communicate, not saying you communicated with them, but actively reaching out. We don't need someone who's going to be showing up at events for pictures. That's not what you need. We need a superintendent who's visible, who's active, who communicate with these students, who represents the students. So the students look at it and they say, wow, I can see myself being one of these people. That's what you want. All these kids here, these younger kids who aren't speaking, they're taking this in too. That's what matters. What are you teaching these kids? What are you teaching them? How are you educating them to prepare them for the future? Because they are the future. You won't be here forever. They're coming next. How are we preparing them to succeed? How are we preparing them to succeed whether they stay in Springfield or not? What tools are you giving to them? Not to specific students, not to special interest people, not just the people who are gonna pour into your pockets and your interests, but the whole community. Uh -huh. Every single child. What are we doing about that? We can do this by strengthening partnerships within the community, right? Increasing awareness about opportunities, providing students with hands-on experiences that connect them to industries because there's plenty of industries and sectors that kids don't know about. There's career opportunities that students don't know about. And it's on us. It's on us to tell them about it. It's on us to expose them to these opportunities. It's great to have teachers of color in the building, but it also matters that these people are educated. You can't just put someone in a building who's not educated and trained. So not only do you need to recruit teachers of color, but you need to make sure that you can retain them and that they're prepared to help our students succeed who are culturally competent and aware of explicit and implicit biases. And lastly, again, repeating myself here, but it's so important, expanding on connected career learning activities. The issue is that we're not connecting the pieces. There's no reason why every single day I'm seeing scholarship opportunities go by. Why? Because students don't understand what they're going to face when they leave. Why? Because students have been passed along for so long. You just, we pass kids along. You set them up to succeed. You give them a degree to go off into the world. We're failing these kids. So what's the next superintendent gonna do to not fail the next generation? Because these kids right now, they've been set back. They're coming out of the pandemic. You see it if you read articles in college, it's a whole gap. It's not just in high school, it's not in elementary. Every society we've been set back. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do to make sure we recover from this gap and help these kids prepare? and succeed so then they can come back and invest in the community or go out into the world and represent Springfield to make Springfield proud. Not just saying, oh, are you graduating these kids, but someone who can be a good representative of this community and speak well of the things that are happening. Not when cameras are watching, come on. but what's happening behind the This is what matters. Sorry. You need a superintendent who's going to do that consistently. Not just smiling and waving at events, but consistently. consistently. Someone you can reach. Someone who hears what we're saying, because a lot of these things have been repeated, but what's going to be done? Mm. Thank you, everyone. It's actually 730. So whether whether Mr. Gonzalez and I disagree on the process, the process is the process. He and I will debate that. One thing you can know is the three of us stay here and listen. I mean, this was 5 to 6.30. We were no, none of us were thinking about leaving while there was people who wanted to express their opinion. We are here to listen. If, please don't misinterpret when I don't respond or agree that I'm dissing you or, I, or I'm dismissing you. We are here to listen to what you have to say and internalize it and pass it on. We're not here to necessarily say, you're right in a meeting, we're gonna do this, this, and this. First of all, we don't have the authority. But we do hear you. As a matter of fact, all of you make it, whether we agree with every single thing that you say or not, you make us all proud. You are shining examples of the way we hope everybody your age will be. Because this society is going down the tubes if we don't have more people who are gonna be involved with the kind of passion that you're displaying and stay involved for their entire life. Also, Chris, is there anyone? 
Is there anyone here that didn't sign up would like to speak? That didn't get the opportunity? So I would like to know what prompted Superintendent Warren to suddenly, abruptly decide not to be superintendent. So we can stop with that transparency. We need a response. What led to him? Probably, I know it's on the 29th, not to want to be superintendent. First of all, I can't speak for the superintendent. That's why I'm saying him. But him. I, I suppose him. a lot of people, when they turn 65, decide I've paid my dues, I want out. But that's your opinion. I'm saying that's that it is my opinion. From him. What led what, to that? Okay. You'll have to ask him. We don't. And that's what I'm that's, saying. You know. He owes a couple a reason why he abruptly decided to retire. In January, or was it February of 29th? That can begin with the transparency. I couldn't do that job as long as he did. I know that. Thank you. Thank you all for Thank coming. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your input. Thank you for listening.